So you mentioned the human condition. Speaking of which, you happen to be a human being who's unfortunately not immortal. That seems to be a fundamental part of the human condition that this ride ends. Do you think about the fact that you're going to die one day? Are you afraid of death? Uh, I I would say that I am not as much afraid of death as I am of um, degeneration. Uh, and uh, I say that in part for reasons of having, you know, seen some tragic degenerative situations uh, unfold. It's exciting when you can continue to participate and uh, feel like you're you're near the the place where the the wave is breaking on the shore if you like <laughs> you know um, and and I I I think about you know my own uh, future potential um, if if I were to undergo a, a begin to suffer from dementia, uh, Alzheimer's disease or semantic dementia or some other condition, you know, I would sort of gradually lose the thread of that ability. And um, uh, so so one can live on for several, for a decade after, you know, sort of having to retire because one no longer has uh, these kinds of... Um, abilities to engage and uh i think that's the thing that i fear the most the losing of that like the that that um the the breaking of the way the flourishing of the mind where you you could have these ideas and they're swimming around and you're able to play with them and yeah and 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 in, in collaborate with other people who you know are themselves uh um really helping to push these ideas forward so yeah. What, what about the edge of the cliff? The, uh, <laughs> the end. I mean, the the mystery of it. The, the I mean, <laughs> the migrated con sort of conception of mind and uh, you know, sort of continuous sort of way of thinking about most things makes it so that uh, to to me the 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 um, the discreteness of that transition is less <laughs> less <laughs> less less apparent than it seems to be to most people. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wonder. So I don't know if you know the work of Ernest Becker and, and so on. I wonder what what role mortality and our ability to be cognizant of it, and anticipate it, and perhaps be afraid of it. What role that plays in in our well, reasoning I, of the world? I think that it it can be motivating to people to think they have a limited period left. Um, I think in in my own case, you know, it it's like seven or eight years ago now that I was, I was sitting around doing experiments on decision making that were um, satisfying in a certain way because I could really get closure on what whether the model fit the data perfectly or not. And I could see how one could test, you know, the predictions in monkeys as well as humans and really see what the neurons were doing. But I just realized, hey, wait a minute, you know, I may only have about 10 or 15 years left here. And I don't feel like I'm getting towards the answers to the really interesting questions while I'm doing this, this particular level of work. And that's when I said to myself, okay, um, let's pick something that's hard, <laughs> yeah. you know? So that's when I started working on mathematical cognition. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I think it was more in terms of, well, I got 15 more years possibly of useful life left. Let's imagine that it's only 10. I, I'm actually getting close to the end of that now, maybe three or four more years. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm beginning to feel like, well, I probably have another five after that. So, okay, I'll give myself another another six or eight. Um, but a deadline is looming. But I'm, and therefore... it's not going to go on forever. Yeah. And so, um, so uh, yeah, I got to keep um, thinking about the questions that I think are the interesting and important ones for sure.